Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and today I've got my Q&A video for you. Round two. I video recorded it earlier and deleted it. So now we're going to do it again. I have my Christmas mug out, my tree, not real. Fire, real. Kitty cats, one sleeping behind me and one's right in front of me. They love the fire. All right, so we have, I even wrote everything down in my YouTube notebook. I love this notebook. Um, for anybody looking, I got it at Home Goods. It was like $6.99 and it's full size, eight and a half by 11. So I have all my questions here. So if you see me looking down, I'm answering questions. So let's get started. But first, you're gonna see this on Thanksgiving and I hope that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family, if you can be with them. If not, I hope at least you're having a good day. And with COVID, it's, I'm sure not what everybody thought it should be, but from my family to yours, I am wishing you a very happy Thanksgiving and hopefully we, uh, getting into the holiday season. Ooh. So, I have stuff on my glasses. It's raining in here. It's ch chilly. I've already got up and I ran to Joanne early this morning. It's Wednesday, I'm filming this. And they started their Black Friday deals. I'm gonna have to wash my glasses. So I went in at six o'clock this morning and it was me and three other people. Perfect. I'm not sure what's going on back there. Well, it'll recatch. Okay, questions for Lori. First question I get a lot of is keto. How long, where do I find recipes? How much weight have I lost? So I've been ketogenic for three years. I started in June of 2017. So June of 2018, 2019, yeah, three and a half years. Um, I started ketogenic in June, my mom passed in February and I decided that it was time for me to start taking care of myself. I had been my mom's main caregiver and I wasn't taking good care of me. Now, prior to that, I had lost like 60 pounds. So I um, had lost weight up to it. I started ketogenic simply, ooh, what's in my hair? Simply to, um, I don't know what that was control my diabetes. I don't want to be on insulin. And for me, staying away from sugar and carbohydrates is the way for me to do that. I take one medicine for my diabetes. It's a shot once a week. It's not insulin. It's just a medication. Helps my body process sugars and carbs, which I give myself very little of. So, oh, hi, buddy. Um, Wellington came by to say hello. Hi, buddy. They're sleepy. Okay. Um, I find my recipes all over the place. I have three cookbooks from Kiss Christy Sullivan. I think she has five out now. They are available on Amazon and it's clean keto. So there's lazy keto, dirty keto, clean keto. I tend to stick with the clean keto because a lot of the artificial sweeteners and carbohydrates affect my blood sugar. So it's not that I think it's better. It's better for me. So there's that. Overall, I've lost 90 pounds total through my whole journey, not just keto. Um, okay, question number two, where do I live? I live in central Ohio. Now I was born in Ohio. I lived in Texas, Massachusetts, and now I'm back in Ohio. Um, when did I start my YouTube channel and why? I, I don't, I should have wrote down the date. I've had it for a couple years and I had a channel prior to this with my friend. We were doing a um, fiber podcast for knitters and I just enjoyed it. I enjoy being creative and I enjoy sharing. And so to me, this was like super fun. And I thought, you know, I can make a little part-time income to support my crafting endeavors and habits and things like that. So, um, and actually, since I can't work my part-time job during COVID, this has worked out perfect, right, Dubs? I have now two lazy cats laying in front of me. I, I'm going to have to read that. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and I started it because I, it was just a hobby, and it is a hobby for me. I mean, I have a full-time job. Um, have I been married? No. 
I've not been married. I don't have children. I have nieces and nephews and little cousins um, that I love dearly and get to take out all my maternal instincts on them without ever having to say no. And I get to spoil them rotten and it's fantastic. And I love them dearly. Uh, my favorite food. So my favorite food of all time is bread that I can't have anymore. Oh, I love a crusty bread with butter. But I love meats and cheese and I eat a lot of keto stuff. So I don't know that I have a specific, okay, sorry, a specific favorite food. I just have, you know, what I can eat. So part of my keto lifestyle has been this change of attitude. So I used to love food and food was an experience and food was tied to memories. And if I was upset or sad, you know, food was there all the time. Now I just eat because I need it to survive. I don't, I don't look at food as an, an enjoyment. I mean, do I like food? Sure. Are there things I prefer over others? Absolutely. But I work very hard at looking at food as a necessity in life and not as an enjoyment or a reward or punishment or whatever. Hi. Okay. I will hold you, but I need you to stop poking me, sir. Um, how many siblings, nieces, nephews, cousins? <sighs> Sir, I'm going to need you to get down. That's rude. <laughs> I have four brothers, all older than me. I'm the youngest of five with my mom and dad. And then my father had another child, a daughter, 15 years. I was 15 when she was born. And when I was 12, one of my brothers passed away. So I have four siblings three brothers living, one deceased, and I have a sister who is much younger than me. Cousins, I have six cousins. Three of them are very much older than me. Um, my youngest is, I think, 11 years older than me, and I didn't really grow up near them, although, I, you know, we have a relationship. I'm just not super close with them. The cousin and my little cousins that I am hanging out with all the time, they are closest to us in age. So there was five of us and three of them in between. We were all, so we're all within a, eight of us are within this six year window. And we grew up together in the same town and we did sports together and we did all the things. So I'm very close with those three cousins and we travel and vacation and do things. I love all my cousins. I'm just closer with those three because they are physically closer to me in age and in proximity. Um, I, you know, we live within a two hours of each other. My one cousin lives 20 minutes down the road, you know, so that's easy. Um, nieces and nephews, I have Sarah, who I talk about all the time. She lives close to me. I have Megan, who lives in Florida with her daughter, Vivian. And then my brother in Massachusetts has four children. Um, I don't see them very frequently, so I don't really have much of a relationship with them. Um, not to say that I wouldn't, I, it's just, again, that whole proximity thing and Sarah, you know, her whole life, she, I've pretty much been around and so we're pretty close. Plus, I consider her a friend. So there's that. Um, I am 50 years old. Um, I just turned 50 in October. Hobbies and interests, oh, you guys see most of it. I love to travel, I love to read, I love to craft, sewing, knitting. I love cooking, I like decorating my home. Um, I love talking. <laughs> I love to work. I'm a worker, I love working. So I, you know, I don't have specific hobbies because I'm always willing to try new things and find new hobbies and new interests. But right now we're, I'm doing a lot of sewing and crafting and things around here because I'm home for the quarantine. Hmm. Okay. My favorite YouTube videos to make. That's, and I don't know that I have a favorite because they all bring something different. I love vlogging because that kind of um, gets you a picture of my life and lets me share with you and feel like I'm interacting. Dollar Tree hauls are fun because I'm super excited to show you all the things I have found and any of the hauls are exciting and then crafted because I love to craft and I love to share. So, and that's typically what my channel is all about. Uh, favorite childhood memory is at my grandfather's bakery. He owned three bakeries and as children, the eight of us would 
go to his bakery and hang out in the back on days he wasn't busy or not open, but he was still down there baking. And we would hang out in the back and he would let us help. And I just love those memories. Childhood memories of cousins and family is really, you know, the kind of cornerstone of my memories of growing up is grandparents, extended family, and just those warm memories. Um, my life, how's my life changed during the pandemic? Pretty much, it's changed a lot. I used to be on the go, go, go all the time, working my other job. I work at a bank full time. That was a question, what do I do? I work for a bank and my part-time job, I work for the Ohio State and I still do, we just can't go. I work for the Ohio State University and I work at the um, Schottenstein Center and that's where hockey, women's basketball and men's basketball play and I'm an usher. So I greet people when they come in, help them find their seats, things like that. And during football season, I work at the shoe where the Buckeyes play football and I do a safety team there. So I walk around and I was averaging about eight miles every Saturday, just walking around and making sure everybody was safe and had the things that they needed. So I don't do that anymore. Um, I don't leave home for work. I work from home now and have since March and it doesn't sound like they're even thinking about bringing us back until next March, I guess is the next time we'll be revisiting our work schedule. So there's a like a lot. I've I've definitely, definitely tried to be more intentional these last eight months with purchases, with what I'm doing. I've definitely home more and putting more time and effort into my home instead of running all the time. Um, so I've definitely had to slow down, which has not been a bad thing. Um, negatively, I miss my family. I miss freely being able to go to cousins' houses and hang out with family members. You know, my oldest brother and his wife live about a half an hour from me, but they have, um, her mom lives with them. So my brother's mother-in-law and she's older. I don't want to risk bringing COVID to somebody, you know, who is at a high risk. So I just kind of stay close to home, close to home. You know, Sarah lives alone. So she's kind of in her bubble. I'm in mine. So we, you know, do things together. But so the downside is I miss my family and I miss socializing. The upside is I'm trying to take this time and kind of be introspective and intentional and put my life together, get my house together and do things that I've neglected because I've just been running. So there's that. Um, have I always lived in Ohio? No, I said I lived in Texas and Massachusetts. Um, I told you I work for a bank. My, um, Favorite go-to meal, honestly, is either sliced meat and cheese, it's already in my fridge because I do that every Sunday, or pork rinds. I mean, let's be honest, I just don't, I don't do a lot of meals because it's just me. Um, I do not sing. I couldn't carry a tune to save my life. And I played clarinet for many a year. Um, and I learned in Texas. And then when I got to Massachusetts, unfortunately, they didn't have a music program, so it kind of went by the wayside. I love music. I don't continue to play music, although I am learning to play the ukulele. Um, weight loss, I told you, 90 pounds. What craft do I prefer? I, I don't have a preference. I love, like, I'm learning how to quilt right now. Don't love it, but I'm going to finish this quilt. And actually, I just went this morning about the rest of the materials. Um, I love knitting. I love needlepoint or counted cross stitch. I like to crochet, although I only really know how to do blankets and scarves. However, I do have a pattern I want to learn to do. But I just love crafting in general. Christmas is my favorite holiday. That was a question. I love Christmas. I love the spirit of the season. I love everything about it. Um, a lot of where do I work? My most watched video is my 2019 DIY Dollar Tree Gnome. I have gotten over 170,000 views on that video. It is the single most watched video I have. Somehow it went, it got into the algorithm. I have no idea how to replicate it, but that is my most, excuse me, sir, your butt's on my book. My favorite Christmas movie that I have to watch every year are The Grinch, the Jim Carrey version, The Polar Express, and then I love the classics. Frosty, Rudolph, all of those. I have to watch them every single year. 
Um, my f favorite TV show, I don't really watch TV. Um, back to being busy, I got rid of cable years ago. I just am not a sit down and watch TV kind of person. Now, I will listen to an audiobook while knitting or doing my cross stitch. Um, I'm more apt to read or listen to an audiobook. Um, my favorite genre of, um, books is like paranormal, paranormal romance, fantasy. I don't want anything close to reality that could really happen. We have enough reality in our life. <laughs> I don't need it in a book. I want to escape drama by reading books. So I do a lot of, um, J.R. Ward is an author that I read, Laura Lee, uh, Christine Feehan. Those are three of my main authors that I enjoy. Um, do I miss foods on keto? Yes, I do miss food. Um, there are certain things I miss. Like, I miss pizza. But I don't miss how it makes me feel. So, th there is the crux for me. I have, if I eat something that I should not eat, I have an immediate reaction to it. Um, my blood sugar shoots through the roof and I feel terrible. Like, sick. It's awful. High blood sugar is no joke. And I feel like nauseous and dizzy. And the longer, the longer that I am off sugar and carbohydrates, the quicker and the more extreme it seems that the reaction is. You know, it's not like my sugar would go to 400. I have, I have eaten something that I shouldn't and it goes up to like 200. And it's not even something I shouldn't eat. It would be considered a diabetic food. My body just can't take it can't handle it. I have, um, what do I have? Insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome. So my body just cannot process sugar and carbohydrates. So to me, I mean, and that's, I guess the benefit for me in this condition, I mean, I'm not really sure it's a condition, but my situation is it's not a hidden reaction. It's not like, Oh, I can have a candy bar and it's fine. Tomorrow I'll be fine. No, I am immediately ill and terrible ill and headache and nausea and super tired and just want to lay down and like be sick. So that really keeps you on track. So for me, that's, that's what keeps me honest, keeps me in the right track, keeps me on the train, keeps me on the wagon because falling off the wagon is gross and I don't like it. And I don't want to be on insulin. And falling off the wagon, I equate my addiction, I say that very loosely, to sugar and carbohydrates as you would an alcoholic. And that's kind of how I feel. If I have, if I start eating bread, I would go to, you know, a loaf of toast, not just one piece of toast. Or I can't open up a candy bar and have two squares. It's just not my makeup. I have a very compulsive personality. And that's something I know about myself. And so I stick to that um and oh one of the cats got an ornament out um now the question i have is about the boys so wellington i think he's 14 i got him when he was six weeks old i adopted him from a friend of mine whose cat got out and got pregnant and she had a litter of kittens and i went and picked him up took him home and took him to the vet got him fixed and i have literally had him since he fit in the palm of my hand Mr. Alex over here, I rescued Alex on February 3rd of 2018. He was um, Sarah, my niece, is a high school English teacher. One of the teachers at her school's son and daughter-in-law had actually rescued him and took him in, got him fixed, and was looking for a home for him. And that's how I came to have Alex. Um, my mom died on February 3rd of 2017 from cancer and Wellington was very sad. He was not used to being home alone all the time and he really stopped eating for a while. It was awful. And I knew I needed to get another pet for him or I, because I wasn't gonna, planning on being working from home. So I knew he needed another cat. So it was not an easy decision. It took me a year to make the decision to try to introduce another cat. I mean, it's not easy when you have a senior male cat and you're bringing in another cat. It worked out perfect in my situation. It took about 24 hours and they've been besties ever since. Alex, we think now is probably six years old. I think he was about three when they got him, but we're not 100% sure. 
again, because he was a rescue, he was found on the street. So he doesn't, um, we, we are not a hundred percent sure they, you know, went by his teeth and what they guessed for him. But so we're not sure, but he, it fit really well. Wellington is pretty chill cat and Alex really just wants somebody to love him. And so it worked out well. Now, Alex would love nothing more than to jump in that bed back there and cuddle up with Wellington and Wellington wants no part of that. So they lay together and they are, they don't fight or anything. They wrestle, they play. Um, there's no animosity. There's no problems. It's just Wellington is not a cuddler and Alex, poor Alex is. So that's my, here's Alex. Come here, buddy. Ooh, he is so big right now. We call him Tubby. Hey, 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 say hi. Will you say hi? He doesn't want me to hold him right now. But he, um, yeah, he's just a joy. He loves my family. They love him. Now, he is nervous. So if somebody comes to the house and he doesn't know, he bolts for the hills until everything down here kind of settles down. All right. So that is everything. That is all the questions that I had to answer. Thank you for asking them. And I am sorry it took so long to get it out. Like I said, this is the second time I'm recording this, but I thought Thanksgiving was the perfect day. So you have a great one and I will talk to you all later. Bye.